In this clip, Avi Loeb explains why Elon Musk is wrong about Mars. Check it out. You know, the issue is not the Earth. The issue is humanity, the future of humanity. And, you know, the Earth itself would be very likely, based on detailed calculations, it will be engulfed by the sun in 7.6 billion years. And here is something that you won't find much discussed. The moon, because of the friction on the envelope of the sun, will crash back to Earth. And then the Earth will move all the way to the center of the sun. Nothing will be left. No monument will survive 7.6 billion years ago uh, into the future. Um, and we have an obligation if we want to be remembered on cosmi in cosmic history, you know. Doesn't the term cosmic history sound so strange? The average person can't even grasp the vastness of the universe, let alone care about our tiny little footprint that we leave behind. We have an obligation not to go to Mars. That's not really a, a great vision. You know, going to Mars is just like, you know, you have a, a group of chimpanzees living in, in the jungle, you know, in, in a, you know, on some trees and they have some bananas and so forth. And then one of the chimpanzees looks far, far away into the horizon and says, oh, look, up there, there is another region that, that we can go to. And, and it, actually, it's clear that there are no bananas there. So the same is about Mars, you know, like, Elon says, let's go to Mars to save humanity, but it's actually not a great place to be on. Yeah, there is no start somewhere. You have no, to start somewhere no, if you so want to populate my, a planet. So here is my point. Okay, here's your point. Before we continue, I just want to give context on where Elon is at with his vision to extend consciousness to Mars. SpaceX plans uncrewed Starship missions to Mars in 2026 to 2027 with a 50% chance, carrying Optimus robots for infrastructure. If successful, crewed flights follow in 2028 to 2031. The fleet will scale exponentially from five ships in 2026 to hundreds by the 2030s, which would enable a self-sustaining city in 20 to 30 years. Sounds like a tall order, but if anyone can do it, Elon is the guy to accomplish it. It makes much more sense for us to invest in building a platform in space that can accommodate humans, not rely on another rock that happens to be near us with much worse conditions. It's a desert, no atmosphere. So let's build a space platform, go on it, and make sure that it's safe for humans to live for long periods of time. We can produce artificial gravity by rotation. Now, you say, well, it will cost a lot of money, but we are spending $2.4 trillion every year on military budgets. That's already a massive hole in Avi's plan. He wants to take money from the military-industrial complex. That's not happening, buddy. If we were just to change our priorities and say, we want to build NOx spaceship, uh, in analogy to Noah's Ark, to save humanity mm -hmm. from the great flood or catastrophe that will happen on Earth. You build such, you, you put a fraction of this $2.4 trillion a year, and I'm willing to bet that within this century, our engineers, architects, scientists, if you put a level of funding of a trillion dollars a year for the next dec several decades, we will come up with a concept that can accommodate humans in space much better than Mars can. Not gonna lie, it does sound more feasible than having to go to Mars. Comment below on what you think about Avi's idea for extending humanity into space. By the way, Mars may have had life before the Earth because it's a smaller body, so it has a bigger surface area for its mass. The mass of the object tells you how much heat it can retain from the formation process, and then the surface area tells you how fast it can cool. And Mars could have cooled faster than the Earth. So life may have started on Mars, actually, because it had rivers, lakes, oceans of water, and it could have been actually delivered to Earth. Uh, you know, we might be all Martians, and when Elon Musk, uh, you know, considers going to Mars, um, it might be the second trip around. We might be going back to our uh, childhood home uh, because there were tiny astronauts inside rocks that were chipped off the surface of Mars that arrived to Earth and seeded the Earth with life as we know it. Panspermia. Pans yeah. Panspermia is the hypothesis that life exists throughout the universe and may have been transported to Earth via meteoroids, asteroids, comets, or spacecraft. It suggests that life did not originate on Earth, but rather that its seeds, such as microorganisms, arrived from space and began life here. And, and in fact, you know, we can find out if we get this material back to Earth, as NASA is planning to do, hopefully within a decade, 
uh, then we can make sure that these were microbes. And perhaps we can infer whether the building blocks of these microbes are similar to the ones we have here on Earth, whether the DNA, RNA kind of uh, process took place in both places. NASA's Mars Sample Return Mission is a joint effort with the European Space Agency. This would be the first planetary sample return from beyond the moon. As of October 30th, 2025, the program is in a redesign phase due to escalating costs, which originally was about $6 billion, now estimated at $8 to $11 billion. A final decision on the path forward is slated for mid-2026. That's the problem with space. Everything takes so damn long, I'll probably be six feet under before anything cool happens. Have you ever done any research on the structural anomalies that are on Mars, particularly the right angles that appear to be a square, this enormous structure? Both Mars and the Moon have no atmosphere, so the objects that come into them do not burn up. Therefore, they serve as museums. Okay, so any, you know, space junk that might have landed on Mars over the past two billion years mm -hmm. would not have burned in the atmosphere. It would have landed and, and, and we can, we need to check the surface, even if we know that, you know, there wasn't any civilization out there over the past two billion years because conditions are really harsh. Right. Um, the, Mars may have collected uh, technological debris from other civilizations because it would stay on the surface. It's just like a yeah, museum. This, this is an enormous structure. Why would you think that they came from space debris rather than a prior civilization? Uh, well, Mars... Let's take a look at it first. Jamie... Yay, we can see the Mars images for the 100th time. Jamie probably has them bookmarked ready to go. Will you pull up those images? So what's fascinating about the images is the right angles, right? Like that one that... Yeah, that's yeah. good. Like, that's kind of crazy, isn't it? It is. And that doesn't strike me as something that landed there from space. It looks like a structure. It's just, it's too even. Yeah. Well, it could be. It that could be. It could be if um, the evolution of intelligence on Mars was accelerated by a factor of two. You know, that's not a big factor, factor of two. Right. Like meaning helped. that uh, intelligence er arose on Mars right. uh, two billion years after it formed, rather than in the case of the Earth, 4.5 or so. Right. And, uh, you know, one thing I really want to do is if I ever have a say or, or go to Mars, I would like to visit those caves, uh, the lava tubes in Mars. The lava tubes on Mars are actually pretty interesting. They are expected to be much larger than the ones on Earth due to Mars's lower gravity. Scientists believe they could be used as natural shelters for future human missions. Avi is about to explain why they are ideal. Because they are protected from the surface, uh, you know, bombardment by cosmic rays and all kinds of things happening, the ultraviolet radiation. So in those caves. I want to check if there are any prehistoric paintings or any technological mm. objects there. What do you think is the predominant theory that explains the lack of atmosphere on Mars? Do you think it was an impact? No, Mars is a less massive planet than the Earth, and therefore it has less gravitational grip on its atmosphere. You know, it may have to do with uh, an eruption on the sun that uh, removed it, uh, or um, the magnetic field, the, the, the lack of a strong enough magnetic field to retain the atmosphere. Um, we don't know for sure, but we know it happened about two to two and a half billion years ago, at the middle of its life. Just to quickly add in, Elon's plan to create an atmosphere on Mars is a pretty wild idea. It involves nuking the poles and adding orbital mirrors around it initially. Long term, he would erect giant solar sails and import greenhouse gases. This guy never fails to think big. Can I ask you this? At yeah. two and a half billion years, uh, when, was it closer to the sun? No, no, no. It was roughly exactly at the same place. Exactly the same distance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then so two and a half billion years ago, it lost its atmosphere. Yes. So if it did have life, that life would have to... So we would have to be looking at something that's literally two plus billion years yes, old, yes. the remnants of a structure, which also seems kind of unlikely, right? It also seems like there probably wouldn't be much there. Uh, I actually did a calculation. Uh, the biggest um, risk for anything on the surface is all these impacts right. by asteroids, and I calculated that- And micrometeors, everything, right? Because there's nothing that's stopping. That's right, that's right. And I calculated the amount of energy over a few billion years that was deposited on the surface of Mars yeah. is equivalent to, uh, you know, hundreds of uh, Hiroshima-type uh, 
nuclear explosions per square kilometer. Isn't that insane? It just goes to show how violent the universe can be. Our existence is such a mini tiny micro blip that flashes in a moment, almost like someone on Earth snapping a picture. That's basically us when you relate it to the life of the universe. Kind of depressing if you think about it. It's really huge. Right. And because you're integrating over billions of years. So that uh, square probably wouldn't be there anymore. It depends what it was originally. You know, if right. the Empire State Building, right. you know, uh, even if after. It was enormous and made completely out of stone, yeah. like the pyramids. Maybe that's what would maybe, be left of it. Maybe. I think we should be definitely open-minded and guided by evidence. That's right. the key. Well, that's and, what's interesting is because that is evidence. That is evidence. We should yeah. go there, clear the dust, and see if, if it's just a rock that happened to right. be shaped like that. Thank you so much for watching. Would love to hear from you in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. See you in the next one.